Hello, everybody. Uh, this is a, a special edition of our Between Two Teachers uh, for the uh, uh, discussion about these union issues that uh, our unit there, CC, SEA, oh, over here, there it is. Oh, it's on this side. <laughs> and uh, some of the issues that have been coming up and the teachers who have been coming to our board meetings. So. Um, yeah, just to introduce myself, I'm Consuelo Lara. And I'm Madeline Cronenberg. This is Between Two Teachers. Um, and, and because it's Between Two Teachers, I am going to do the uh, labor and body recognition and the land acknowledgement. Yes. Uh, I acknowledge that the burden of environmental exploitation and systemic injustice falls upon the labor of black and brown bodies in the building of this country and its institutions. I remember that black and brown people were born and died working this land against their will for generations. I also acknowledge the continued contribution of the labor of survivors over the centuries to today of all immigrant labor, including voluntary, involuntary, trafficked, forced, and undocumented peoples in the building of what we refer to as these United States. And the author, is Dr. Rochelle Rogers Ard. And as always, we're going to do the, the um, land acknowledgement. We pause to acknowledge that we have gathered on the ancestral territory of Huichin, part of the unceded land of the Chochenyo and Karkin speaking Muwekma Ohlone people. We remember their continued connection to this region and give thanks to them for allowing us to live, work, learn, and pray on their territory and traditional homeland and offer our respect to their elders and all Ohlone people of the past and present. And as always, we absolutely encourage you to uh, follow the Justice for Mawekma um, hashtag so that you can find uh, ways to support the Ohlone people and their uh, quest to become uh, recognized as a as a tribe by the federal government and also the curriculum um, opportunities to learn more about it that are on the East Bay Regional Park District homepage or uh, you can search for it on their homepage and just search uh, Ohlone Peoples and um, also you can go to the board con the Contra Costa County Board of Education which will be the topic of our conversation today. Uh, anyway, go to there yeah. and find our material. Yes. Um, I really like that labor um, acknowledgement. It's so important. And really, that's what we want to talk about today is people getting paid fairly for their work, really. And when that work involves our children, especially, um, it's so, so important. So we want to give some um, attention to that. Uh, I'm on the Contra Costa County Board of Education, representing Area 1, which is West Contra Costa. And uh, there are the teachers um, union there who they, those teachers, there's about 70 of them, I suppose. And they teach in our community court schools. And they also teach at, um, at the juvenile hall. So, and they also teach special ed um, and some of the more severe um, cases of that. So, and many of those students come from my area of area one, our area. So uh, they've been coming to the meeting, to our meetings. They came last month and they, uh, uh, people knew they were coming. This time, nobody knew ever expected it. And they came at the end of the budget meeting with their bullhorn and chanting and they came in and sat down. And so then they got about an hour and a half to share. And this time they really shared about personal stories and how, you know, we were just saying like, one of the worries is I'm not gonna get bit by a student today, but there's so many issues that are, um, that those teachers deal with. And then, you know, some go home to, you know, they're single parents and then they have to um, take care of their own families. And uh, so they're coming for a fair wage 
and they will even say they're not asking for a raise. They just want to get their COLA uh, adjustment that is due them. So that doesn't seem like a lot. And I was just thinking like at West Contra Costa with thousands of teachers, that could be millions of dollars. This is not that uh, large of a group. And their budget is, is very large here. So it, I don't see it as being, you know, breaking the bank to uh, make this fair, you know, to give the fair wage. So um, I wanted to bring this up. I want us to talk about what uh, the teachers are asking and what response they've been getting. So they wouldn't be there. Right now they are at uh, fact finding. And that's the thing I don't, that, so there's impasse, there were negotiation, and, and then they're, now they're at, what's the next step after fact finding? Well, after fact finding, hopefully there's settlement. If there's not settlement, then they can go back to their groups and then you can become ready to strike. That's what I thought. This is pretty far along. Yeah. Yes. And as far as I could tell, uh, they've been offered by Lynn Mackey. And I just have to say, she is 100% in charge of this decision and this situation. The board, you know, she says all the time, we're not her board, we're not her board. So we, uh, but- uh, people, people do need to, we just need to be really clear about that. Miss Mackey is Superintendent Mackey and all of your other district superintendents in the county are people who are hired by the school boards that we elect. In Contra Costa County, it's true in some other counties, not all other counties in California for whatever complicated reasons, historical reasons. But in Contra Costa County, the superintendent of schools is elected. And the role of the elected superintendent is to negotiate the salaries and uh, oversee the operations of the Office of Education for the county. The role of the board is is to do some uh, uh, to approve charter schools and to approve the budget overall of uh, of the office that the budget that Miss Mackey's team presents to the board. But Miss Mackey evaluates the employees, and she uh, is in charge of all the specifics around negotiation, and that is different from uh, a district, a, a, a regular district, the traditional district that we of which we have uh, 17, 18 in, in Contra Costa County. And that's confusing because it's yeah. different. It is, it's very different. And um, uh, the, in this, the whole state, there are, they're all elected superintendent, county superintendents, except five. There's five counties where they are appointed and hired by the, by the uh, board. And uh, so it limits, uh, you know, people say, well, we got to change that over to being like, you know, you don't really, I don't think personally you need to do that. What you need to do is elect the right person who knows how to collaborate, who will bring in your board and see them for what they are, resources of intelligence and collaborate partnerships and get the suggestions, ask, you know, here are some decisions to be made and um, <clears throat> work as a team. Yeah. That does and, not and but you don't have to. You don't have that. You don't and, have to, right. You don't have to, that, that's my point. However, I, I do wanna just make the point that if you want to speak to the superintendent, this is the meeting you have to go to. She doesn't have a separate meeting. This is the meeting, even though she uh, and, and she does her superintendent's report. And that's, you know, uh, that's the, the public venue, the only public venue anybody has to address the superintendent. So that just needs to be clear. You're in the right meeting, but it it doesn't feel like it sometimes because you're addressing a board that doesn't have the uh, same connections to you that a, a traditional district board would. District board. Yeah. And uh, you know, what just came up was if you look at the organizational chart for our county, 
and it's got the superintendent and it also has the board and there's all these lines connecting. There is nothing connecting the board and the superintendent. And that's yeah. by design by this particular superintendent. And I have to say, she's really good at setting up walls and making sure that there's no interactions there. She was, she was very good at that. So like I said, the um, collaboration is, is non-existent, let alone shared governance, which is the way we're supposed to be going. Yeah, it, it, that concept is, um, is not even being considered. So um, yeah, so I wanted to bring, I wanted to make sure that we bring up the status of these teachers, where they are now, what it is they're asking for, and um, what they're willing to do. It looks like they're, they're very willing to fight, to just keep on fighting. And they now have, the first time they came, UTR, United Teachers of Richmond, and the county uh, union came together. This last time, this month, there was a wider group of supporters for them. There were teacher unions from Pittsburgh, uh, from uh, South County, all, all over in in uh, support and and they these districts know that some of the students that the districts are not able to um to provide service for are then come to the county and then these teachers are the ones who take care of them and so there is a lot of respect from the districts for these teachers i mean it's it's just amazing they are and the, and the fact that they love their jobs. They don't wanna go anywhere else. Oh my gosh, the dedication. I was just uh, amazed. And um, why aren't we giving them this simple thing that a fair, you know, COLA adjustment, that's it. So uh, I just wanted to bring that to the attention of everybody, I'm hoping we can you know, continue to um, post and repost about this. There's, I think an ed source, is it from ed source? There's an article, um, uh, Trustee Butler and I have been posting as much information as we can uh, because that's very important. It's important for people to know and to support uh, these teachers and their efforts. Um, let me see what else I wanted to, um, to share, oh, one of the things uh, that I'm hoping that we can do on the board is to have a set place on the agenda for our employee organizations to be able to come and address the board on whatever matter. You know, every meeting, at every meeting, to be able to have access to the board and talk about, you know, anything. That is a no. That is a best practice. That's done at a number of school boards, right? Some school boards that meet more than once a month do it every other meeting. They do it just once a month, but you only meet once a month. We only meet once a month. So yeah. it would make sense for you to be able to give three minutes or, or five minutes to I each to your to your employees, and so that people can celebrate just as the board members celebrate their activities and, and uh, certainly the superintendent gets to give her report, uh, the uh, teachers would be able to, to share their uh, successes and, and their challenges. And that really gives a way for the community to come together. So that really has been a best practice for districts across the nation to do that. Exactly. It, it does, that little thing does so much. It, it's giving voice, you yes. know, and it releases some of that tension that could be building up and building up and then you're not communicating. It's a way of communication and uh, it does so much. And you're right, they could spotlight teachers or spotlight schools, programs. Uh, there's so many things that they could do. So I'm hoping that that's something we can add. I've asked, requested that that be put on the agenda. So um, that's one of the things that there are things that even though we don't vote 
for these things. There's so much we can do. And when the public comes for public comment, we especially have things that we can do. And it's even in, I notice it's not being read, uh, but it should be. There's like six things that we could be doing. We could ask more questions. We can make announcements, report on what we're doing. We can refer the matter to staff and ask for other information. We can ask that the staff report back on a matter at a subsequent meeting. And for us, that would be about the budget and how that budget is allocated and spent. And we could also, you know, ask them to place it on the, to continue the discussion, having it placed on the agenda at the future times. So there are some things that we can do. Right. Because you could ask for an additional special meeting, right? To discuss how, what possible solutions there are to this. I mean, yeah. that's really, that's really a fair thing. And this is separate. I just want to say, we understand the difference between negotiating. And we're not talking about negotiating here. We're talking about looking at the budget on the whole, the way a board member needs to look at it. And the kinds of things you can look at is um, uh, what are the, how, when you look at your budget in a macro level, what percent is going to back office work? What percent is going to frontline classroom teachers? What percent is going to other things? And where are those revenues coming from? And what, what percent is coming from um, the state LCFF money? What percent is coming from somewhere else? That's the kind of thing you could have a special board meeting to talk about if you wanted to. Yeah, like a, a study session. So a that study it's clear to all of us. And I think you had said before in the past that the the union and the management have to agree on the number, the the beginning number. Okay, so then you can move forward. And there's a big discrepancy about the numbers when it comes to the reserve, when it comes to the COLA, when it comes to, well, where is the actual number? Uh, and that, that would be, and that's part of the budget. And it's something we- right board members should know and need to know. Right. So that's- uh, So those are all roles that, the, that board members play. And then in, in collaboration with uh, the superintendent and the superintendent's team, they, the superintendent has a, a team of people, but in the end, the superintendent is the decision maker. Yes, yes. And I do have to have a, a big shout out for the staff. You know, there's so many- wonderful people that are doing a great job uh, and they are not the issue at all. It's the administration and the decisions that are being made by the superintendent, really. So um, I think that is what it is that we wanted to accomplish here. Um, and so our shout out is to the, the wonderful teachers that spent uh, their time the other night coming before the board and the public to share um, their frustrations and their hopes that things will uh, will get better and that they'll get you know they'll get uh, acknowledged and get the funding that that they deserve yes yes that's right and support is growing support is growing for, <laughs> for these teachers as well so exactly um, as as it as it should be. So here, here they are. Here's some of them. Let me put this one up. I encourage everybody to go to it. Yeah, there's there they are. From so many different, uh, they've got the East Bay Coalition uh, all together there. So, which is great because it's teachers supporting teachers. Smaller groups of teachers have the ability then to network with others who can who can come in and support them. And it's a very good thing. It's a very good thing. Very yeah, good thing. All right, so that's it for this special edition yes. of Between Two Teachers. We'll see you again next time. And thank you, everybody. All right, bye-bye.